All right, thanks for uh, watching my video. Uh, so coming in early December 2020, uh, Whidbey Health is changing uh, how we document and order uh, restraints throughout the institution. And uh, uh, this video is kind of a primer on that, uh, so you know what to expect and, and how to do it correctly. Um, Medicare requires uh, fairly specific uh, requirements and documentation for restraints, uh, and this applies to all uh, medical facilities uh, and all places in the hospital and all patients uh, regardless of age. Patients have a right to be uh, free of uh, corporal punishment and uh, abuse, and uh, because of that, restraint should only be used uh, when medically necessary, not for convenience uh, or retaliation. Um, they have to be uh, used appropriately and discontinued at the earliest time. Um, this applies to all hospital patients uh, in all hospitals, again, even in behavioral units, um, and uh, it, it's driven based on patient assessment, and we'll get into more of that later, how that gets done. Uh, any uh, manual uh, method of um, immobilizing or reduces uh, the ability of a patient to, uh, to move uh, is a restraint. Uh, chemical restraints are also a type of restraint. Um, so uh, if you're holding a patient, if you tie them up in a sheet, if you uh, put uh, cuffs on them, uh, soft restraints, these are all types of restraints. This includes um, uh, therapeutic holds uh, used in, in, um, in all sorts of de-escalation practices. Nonviolent restraints are basically soft cuffs or mitts that you would use on uh, patients to protect them from removing uh, healing devices. Uh, this would be uh, most commonly, uh, you know, soft restraints on intubated patients. Uh, violent restraints uh, include uh, locking restraints, but also seclusion, uh, physical holds, uh, chemical restraints, and physical escorts. So note at any time that uh, something uh, applies to a violent restraint because the uh, rules for nonviolent and violent restraints are different. Uh, note that uh, chemical seclusion, physical hold, and physical escorts as well as locking restraints would all uh, fall under that violent category. Um, so chemical restraints uh, get a little iffy in the sense that, you know, some medications uh, under some circumstances might be used as a chemical restraint and under other circumstances they might be used for other purposes. Uh, for example, if you give someone a shot of lorazepam uh, to calm anxiety, uh, that would not be a restraint. Uh, but if you give them uh, a shot of lorazepam so that they stop, stop kicking people uh, or uh, keep them in the room, that would be a restraint. Uh, you know, you can come up with other examples of just about any medication we use uh, as a chemical restraint. Uh, ketamine can be used for other purposes, obviously. Uh, Zyprexa can be used for psychosis as opposed to uh, restraint. So it depends on the purpose of uh, the administration of the drug as opposed to the exact drug or drug combination themselves. Um, to do, if, um, if a patient is disabled by the chemical or the drug that you're using, it is a restraint. Physical escorts uh, are only a restraint if the patient can't easily escape the grasp. So if someone is being walked to and from a room uh, and you have a light touch on them to keep them from falling or to kind of coax them in the right direction, that's not a restraint. Uh, if people are are grabbing all fours and walking them, then uh, that is a restraint. Um, if you're forcing a patient to be held, again, that's going to be a restraint. Um, however, uh, if, if a patient can, can refuse a treatment, that is not a restraint. Seclusion is a type of restraint. If someone is being secluded in a room and held there, uh, that's a restraint. Uh, that said, if they're asked to stay in a room but they could leave, uh, that is not a restraint. 
Uh, and a couple of exclusions. Um, contraindications are rare, but obviously if someone has a broken arm, you're not going to you're not going to put a restraint on that arm. Um, if they have claustrophobia, it's kind of an iffy situation because they could just say they're claustrophobic, but uh, obviously this depends on provider judgment. Um, shackles or handcuffs placed by uh, law enforcement uh, is not considered restraint, um, but it should be documented in the record that it was placed by law, law enforcement. So these are the types of restraints that uh, would be health is using. You can see uh, going in a clockwise fashion from the top left, those would be your soft, uh, soft nonviolent restraints. Then uh, you've got mitts. Uh, then you've got locking restraints in the next two. Uh, papoose board. Uh, this isn't one I usually think of as, as a restraint, uh, you know, if you're suturing a kid's face, but uh, start thinking of that. And then finally, uh, chemical restraint. I didn't actually go clockwise there. I just realized that. But. You figured it out. Um, restraints are only applied for current indications. It's not what a patient might do or, or what they've done in the past, um, and so you have to be careful with that. And then uh, patients do uh, have to have a comprehensive assessment uh, documented uh, when they're in restraints. Never, never restrain someone face down. I think we all know this by now, uh, but that's very dangerous. Uh, and uh, numerous deaths have been associated with that. So the attending provider uh, has to do a, uh, a, a review of the physical and psychological status of the patient when restraints are started uh, to determine whether to start or uh, continue uh, restraints or seclusion. And then you have to write an order. Uh, there will only be two orders. Uh, violent and nonviolent. Uh, I take that back. Three orders: violent, nonviolent, and chemical. Uh, and there are we uh, some required uh, fields within those orders that you'll have to fill out, and I'll show you more of that in a minute. Uh, violent restraints. So that would be physical uh, or seclusion. Um, I'll come back to chemical in a minute, even though they're a form of violent uh, restraints because there's a little bit different in the order. Um, the attending provider has to, uh, you know, uh, document the reasoning for the restraint, um, and then the uh, the actual uh, time limit for restraints is four hours for violent restraints uh, for adults, two hours for ages nine to seventeen, and one hour under the age of nine. The uh, order also, uh, you know, when you when you start or continue restraints, you also have to say uh, what what is required to discontinue the restraints because um, restraints uh, always need to be discontinued at the earliest opportunity. Um, for a chemical restraint, uh, it's a little different because you uh, only order chemical restraints once. Uh, the order does not renew. Um, and so it's assumed that as the chemical wears off, uh, the restraint is sort of self-limited. Nonviolent restraints, um, the, uh, the uh, requirements are a little less, uh, and you only have to renew nonviolent restraints every 24 hours. I didn't put in this, um, this, uh, this PowerPoint is a, is a distilled down version of what the nurses are being taught, and uh, so it doesn't talk about what the nurses are required to document, but they are required frequent documentation depending on the type of restraints. For any violent restraint, so that's again violent, chemical, seclusion, or holds, you do have to do what's called a face-to-face -face evaluation. It has to be um, after initiation or renewal of the order, uh, so, uh, but as soon as possible after the order. Uh, so in theory, you're going to order the restraint and then immediately do the face-to-face -face evaluation and document that. As a general rule, uh, providers, uh, this, the face-to-face -face evaluation is a provider responsibility, um, except in um, extreme circumstances. So again, face-to-face -face, uh, within an hour, but sooner the better after, again, after the application of uh, violent restraints on all patients. Even if, even if you, uh, put restraints on and, and they come off in five minutes, you still have to do the face-to-face -face evaluation and document it.
So uh, you, this is being a, uh, we want this to be a productive process. So when you uh, apply uh, restraints, uh, you also need to think of ways to uh, help the client calm down uh, and um, get those restraints off as soon as possible. Seclusion assessment, this is a nursing assessment, has to be done every 60 minutes, uh, more frequently if necessary. And this is actually is an important point. If a patient is secluded and restrained, uh, continuous monitoring is required. <clears throat> restraints must be discontinued at the earliest possible time. Uh, restraints are either on or off. You can't do a trial release. Um, and um, basically, patients who are improving and complying with behaviors uh, need to have their restraints off. You can temporarily pause restraints for any of these. Um, this is not considered a release. Uh, this is a pause. If restraints are discontinued uh, and then placed again, you have to have a new order. Uh, so um, we talk about, uh, uh, you know, if, 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 if a patient uh, gets put in four-point restraints, locking restraints, and they come off five minutes later, and then they go back on five minutes later, you have to do a new order. That said, um, <coughs> you also have to do a new face-to-face -face if that happens. But you only have to do a face-to-face -face, uh, for each event. And, and, and basically the way of thinking of that is, you know, what I just described with restraints coming off and then after a time going back on, that's two events. But if you're holding the patient to put them in locking restraints and at the same time giving them some chemical restraint, that's all one event. That's all one face-to-face. -face. That's all one order. I take that back. That would be two orders because you're doing both violent restraints and, uh, and a chemical restraint order. But it would only be one face-to-face -face documentation. So here's kind of the, the down and dirty of, uh, of what you need to do. Um, so up here, to initiate nonviolent restraints, you have to write the order. You have to figure out what type of appropriate uh, restraint and ensure the duration is correct. For violent restraints, you have to do the violent restraint order. Uh, you have to do the face-to-face -face evaluation uh, within an hour and uh, generally as soon as possible, but after the time of the order. And then... Um, We'll go through in, in the second PowerPoint of how to document the face-to-face -face, uh, so that you hit all the check boxes that have to be checked in the face-to-face -face, uh, documentation. Uh, again, you know, justification, condition, uh, and what, what else you've tried uh, to, uh, to keep restraints off the patient. For chemical restraints, chemical restraint order, communicate to the nurse that you're ordering chemical restraint, face-to-face -face evaluation. Again, same, same uh, uh, documentation requirements for the face-to-face -face evaluation, but um, uh, remember that um, this order uh, doesn't have to be renewed, uh, unlike the violent restraint orders. For on ongoing uh, nonviolent restraints, uh, every 24 hours you need a new order. For violent restraints, uh, you need an order every four hours, uh, but, but more frequently for kids. Again, up to every hour for a patient aged under, under age nine. Um, this says you have to um, uh, do a face-to-face -face every 24 hours. That's actually not true in our facility, but it is best practice to do another face-to-face -face every 24 hours. It's not required though, but again, best practice. Um, chemical restraints, uh, you have to do a new chemical restraint order uh, and a new face-to-face -face, uh, with each chemical restraint. So if you give a patient some ketamine, lorazepam, and then four hours later you give them some Zyprexa and Ativan, uh, both as chemical restraint, you're doing a new chemical restraint order and a new face-to-face -face because that's a different event uh, and those uh, chemical restraints were considered to have been discontinued uh, after each administration. Uh, and this one, maybe or maybe not a duh, um, if there's a, a cardiac or respiratory arrest, the restraints need to be renewed, 
Um, there's several reasons for that. One is to allow you to do the things you need to do under that circumstance. And two is uh, just under the concern that the restraints may have been the cause, you need to remove any cause of the arrest. Again, you know, restraints are dangerous, so be careful with them. I'm going to move on to um, some specific uh, uh, cases and, and, and more of the down and gritty of, of how to order these things. And I'm going to start with the uh, with nonviolent restraints because they're a little easier. Um, so again, for any restraint, nonviolent or violent, uh, you need to uh, try less restrictive measures, you know, talking the patient down, offering them a nicotine patch, offering them uh, something to pee in, um, you know, things like that. Um, the uh, order actually looks like this, nonviolent restraints, initiate nonviolent restraints. Um, when that order comes up, you'll be reminded that the uh, order expires every 24 hours. Uh, and this is the, uh, there's a continue and a initiate order. Um, in this case, we're initiating them. Uh, when you uh, fill out the uh, nonviolent restraint, there are um, uh, required fields. First would be initial order versus a renewal order. And remember, it's, it's an initial order for the first time and any time that the restraints are discontinued and then started again. So if a patient uh, is off of restraints for a while and then starts them again, that's an initial order, not a renewal. A renewal is just when you're going straight from one order to the next need to fill in the type of restraints um, uh, and what what behavior is requiring the restraint. Again, um, as previously mentioned, only violent restraints, which include uh, chemical uh, restraints, uh, holds, um, locking restraints, um, and seclusion, those are the ones that require the face-to-face -face, uh, documentation. Nonviolent restraints do not. Um, so you have to renew the order prior to the uh, expiration date and time. Again, it's 24 hours. Uh, so each day you need to do this for nonviolent restraints. Hopefully in the ED that won't be an issue, but obviously for the hospitalists, uh, for, for ICU patients, uh, uh, they will. Um, and again, if there's major changes, it's, it's a new order, um, not, not a renewal. So that was the easier one. I'm going to talk a bit about uh, the ordering of violent restraints now, because um, that's a little more in depth. And then I'll actually walk you through Meditech in test real quick and kind of show you. So uh, for violent restraints, um, again, like all restraints, less restrictive measures need to be if, uh, tried and exhausted uh, prior to restraint initiation. Um, and it's a provider order that's necessary. Um, when you uh, ha when you write the order, it'll again remind you of the frequency of renewal, and I say it again: eight, uh, for adults, it's uh, every four hours; for uh, kids over the age of nine, it's every two, and under the age of nine, it's every hour. The required fields are similar: uh, initial versus renewal, and the type. So you can see here the the types of uh, restraints that are that are listed. <clears throat> Which extremities you're going to use, and then seclusion is put on here too. Um, so, so if you're doing all all extremities, you type in that. If you're doing both upper extremities, it's this. But again, seclusion is uh, is included in this as well. And then you also have to put you know what what behavior is uh, requiring the complaint or the uh, restraints you can use other um, but then there will be a requisite comment um, so to do the face-to-face -face, basically what you do is uh, at the bottom of your um, once you once you've opened uh, a template note in Meditech you can go to add section and then you click on face-to-face -face for restraints this may look a little different once we go live in the sense that um, you can only add this order uh, to a note, or you can only add this section to a note once. 
Um, and obviously, uh, some patients will require more than one face-to-face, -face, uh, either if they're requiring more than one round of chemical restraints or if uh, restraints are discontinued and then renewed. So I think the plan is to have uh, this copied a bunch of time and go face-to-face -face one, face-to-face -face two, face-to-face -face three, so on and so forth. And again, I'll, sh I'll show you that in live in a minute. Um, in the face-to-face, -face, uh, you can see anything that's starred uh, is, is a necessary um, component of, uh, of the face-to-face uh, -face note. And um, so you put, you know, what type of, of restraint they have, um, what, their, what their reaction to the restraints is, their attitude, their behavior, their mood, their orientation. Um, and then there are some required systems here. Uh, that I'll show you again in live. So when you write a renewal order, again, here's the schedule. I won't say it again, but um, make sure to do that um, on time. Um, and uh, it should the nurses should be notifying you. They'll, they're going to get a, a, a note on their work list uh, when uh, a renewal is uh, necessary. If the order changes, it's a new order, not a renewal. So again, chemical restraints uh, fall under the purview of violent restraints, and you have to do a face-to-face. -face. Um, the nurses will be getting uh, extensive um, training on this uh, because basically these patients are going to generally need cardiac monitoring uh, when uh, chemical restraint is initiated. So um, the order for chemical restraint, when you, um, oops, whoa, just happened. Go back. So if you're ordering a parenteral forms of any of these meds over here, Haldol, Ketamine, Ativan, Zyprexa, or Versed, um, it's going to come up as a reflex order, uh, kind of like uh, when you order a NEB. There's the uh, RT to give NEB reflex order. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to do the chemical restraint. Now, if you're ordering Haldol, for example, for a headache, you're going to uncheck these things um, because obviously you're not using it for chemical restraint under those circumstances. Uh, but if, if you're ordering Haldol uh, for a chemical restraint, then you're going to keep these things pre-checked. And then that'll bring up a screen. I'll show you. And under the initiate chemical restraints, that'll bring up a screen that says, uh, what are you using as the chemical restraint? Um, and, and again, why? So let's go in to test here and kind of give you the 411 of how to do this. So, so let's say this patient um, is going into restraints um, and you've already got the, uh, the general template ordered. Now, again, so you're going to, if, if, there, if it's a violent restraint, you need to do a face to face. You're going to click on this add section and you're going to go to face to face for restraints. And that brings a new part of your note. Um, another change is, uh, I think before we go live, there will be a, a date and time uh, because this, this face to face needs to be dated in time. So there will probably be an, a, a, a required uh, date and time for the face to face in this. Um, but again, anything that's starred, uh, you have to fill in. Otherwise, it won't let you. Um, uh, it, it won't allow you to lock your note until all of the required um, uh, things are are filled out. Um, so, so again, here's the there's a review of systems section that you have to put in. And, oops, I misspelled drugs. There we go. So all these, all these uh, things need to be filled out. And then once that's in there, you can see what your. I'll kind of give you a show, what that part of the note looks like. So you can see it. It ends up in your note um, there, and you see. I filled out all the required things because otherwise it won't have uh, the signed thing will be grayed out. You won't be able to fill in uh, the sign queue if it's uh, not done. 
and then a couple other salient points again um, if you order parenteral meds that would trigger chemical restraint well this isn't live yet evidently let me, let me try held all Okay, they haven't made this live yet, but but this will come up with a reflex order. Actually, maybe. Oh, there it is. Okay, falling ref reflex orders were loaded. Chemical restraint. So you can see here. So it's actually not pre-checked. So if you're giving Haldol for a headache, you would just leave it like this. But if you're giving Haldol um, for uh, restraint purposes, then you're going to click those, and then again you'll have to fill out what you're giving. It's not a seclusion restraint, although that's not started, so you don't have to fill that out. And then violent behavior requ require, requiring restraint, so potential to harm. And then just pin that in, and that's your that's your chemical restraint. Again, it's a chemical restraint, so it doesn't doesn't renew. Um, but you would have to go back and uh, do your face to face with a chemical restraint because it's a form of violent restraint. And you can see. Um, Show you the nonviolent restraint order. So you do have things you need to fill out. So it's an initial order, not a renewal violent restraint type. We're doing locked restraints. And you have to put in where. So if you're doing all fours, you would do all extremities. And then why? Well, because he's aggressive. And then you would submit that. So that's, uh, that's what restraints look like uh, in Meditech. Again, our go-live date will be uh, on or around December 3rd. Um, so uh, if you have any questions, uh, drop me a line or um, contact Christy Stevens, um, our uh, education coordinator at the hospital. Thanks.